Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial on reverse percentages. In previous tutorials, we worked out how to find the new value after we increased or decreased the original value by a percentage. In this tutorial, we're going to work out how to find the original value before the percentage change was applied to it. And I'm going to be showing you two methods to solving these types of problems for calculator and non-calculator questions. So let's have a look at the first question. A t-shirt is reduced in a sale by 20% to £15.60. What did the t-shirt cost before the sale? Now many students would try to solve this problem by adding 20% of this amount back on to £15.60. But the problem is that you're taking 20% of the new value, but really you should be taking 20% of the original value, which we don't know yet. But one way we can do this is by using a type of proportion method where we say that the original value is always equivalent to 100% and then try to work out what 100% is equal to. Okay, so let's say that the t-shirt price before the sale is equivalent to 100%. Now, since we were given that the t-shirt price was £15.60 after it was reduced by 20%, well then we can say that 80% is equivalent to £15.60 and we get the 80% by doing 100% minus the 20% reduction. Now from here we need to try to work out what 100% of the price is equivalent to and we can do this by dividing both sides of the equivalence by 80 to give us 1% and therefore 1% is equivalent to 19.5p and we're not going to round this as we haven't yet come to the end of the calculation and so to get a hundred percent all we need to do is times both sides by a hundred to get that a hundred percent is equivalent to 19 pounds 50p and therefore the t-shirt price before the sale is equal to 19 pounds 50p okay you can check your answer by taking 20 percent of this value and since this was a reduction by 20%, if we subtract that value from £19.50, we should get £15.60. Let's have a look at another problem. The price of a local football club's season ticket increased by 4%. The new price of a season ticket is £98.80. What was the price before this increase? So let's say that the ticket price before the increase was equivalent to 100%. Now given that the new price of the season ticket was £98.80 after it was increased by 4%, but well, we can say that 104% is equivalent to £98.80. And we got the 104% by adding 4% this time to 100% as the price increased by 4%. Again, we're trying to find what 100% is equivalent to and we can do this by first dividing both sides of the equivalent by 104, which will give us the equivalent value of 1%. And using our calculator, we would get that 1% is equivalent to 95p. And so to get 100%, we simply times both sides of the equivalent by 100 to get that 100% is equivalent to 95 pounds. And therefore, the ticket price before the increase was 95 pounds. Okay. Now, an alternative way that we could have solved both of these problems is by using multipliers. Remembering from previous tutorials that we use multipliers to increase or decrease amounts. Well, given the multiplier and the new amount, well, we could use this equation. The original amount times by the multiplier is equal to the new amount to work out the original amount. For example, in the first question, if we were to let X be equal to the t-shirt price before the sale, the original amount, well, if we use the above equation, X times by 0 0.8, which is the equivalent multiplier for a 20% reduction, should be equal to 15.60, which is the new amount after the percentage decrease was applied to X. And so what do we need to do to find X? Well. We simply need to divide both sides of this equation by 0 0.8, giving us that x is equal to 19 pounds 50. 
which is the same as we got before, okay? We could have used the multiply method for the second question as well, where if we had let X be equal to the ticket price before the increase, then using the equation above, we'll get that X times by 1.04, the equivalent multiplier for a 4% increase is equal to 98.80, the new amount after the ticket price increased by 4%. So to solve for X, we would divide both sides by 1.04 and get that X is equal to 95 pounds, which was exactly the same as before, okay? Now, I personally prefer the multiplier method as it can be a lot more efficient in some examples. However, I'd recommend that you learn both of the methods because you might find the proportion method to be easier to solve some of the non-calculator problems. Let's have a look at some more examples. Jamie buys a laptop for 480 pounds. The cost includes VAT at a rate of 20%. How much is a laptop without VAT? Now, since we're told that the cost of 480 pounds includes the VAT, this is the value of the laptop after the 20% increase was applied to the original amount. So to work out how much the laptop is without VAT, we need to find the price of the laptop before this increase of 20%. So using the proportion method, we can say that the laptop price without VAT is equivalent to 100%. And given that the cost of the laptop was 480 pounds after a 20% increase in price, we can say that 120% is equivalent to 480 pounds. We could divide both sides of this equivalence by six to get that 20% is equivalent to 80 pounds. And to find the equivalent value of 100%, we can multiply both sides by five to get that 100% is equivalent to 400 pounds. And so the laptop price without VAT is equal to 400 pounds. We could have also solved this using the multiply method. If we let X be equal to the laptop price without VAT, then using this equation, X times by 1.2, the equivalent multiplier for a 20% increase in price is equal to 480. And we could get X by dividing both sides of the equation by 1.2. Now, since this is a non-calculator question, we could work this out by multiplying the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 10, giving us that x is equal to 4,800 over 12. And you can simplify this fraction by seeing that 12 goes into 48 four times, and therefore the value of x is equal to 400 pounds, which is the same as what we got before. Let's try out the next question. A chest of drawers is reduced in a sale by 30%. The discount was three pounds and 90 pence. What was the original price? Now we have to be careful in this question because here we're not told what the new amount is after the percentage change. Instead, we're told what the percentage change, 30%, is equivalent to. And we can use the proportion method to work out the original price. So if we say that the original price is equivalent to 100%, given what we're told, we need to work out what 100% is. Now from the question, we can say that 30% is equivalent to £3.90. And as I mentioned, you have to be careful here because although it says discount, we're not going to be subtracting this 30% from 100%. Instead, the 30% is directly equivalent to the £3.90. So since this is a non-calculator question, we can divide both sides of the equivalents by three, which will give us that 10% is equivalent to £1.30. And to find 100%, we need to multiply both sides by 10, to give us that 100% is equivalent to 13 pounds. And so the original price was equal to 13 pounds. And you can always check your answers for these types of questions by taking 30% of this original price and seeing that you should get three pounds 90. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. In an auction, Neha bought a painting for 20% more than the original selling price. This cost her 15 pounds 99 extra. What was the original selling price of the painting? So this is another question which is similar to the previous question where they try to confuse you with words such as 20% more. By reading this question carefully, you can see that the 20% more she paid 
was equivalent to the £15.99 extra. So let's say that the original selling price is equivalent to 100% and let's try to work out what 100% is equivalent to. And given what we're told, we can say that 20% is equivalent to £15.99. And so to work out what 100% is equivalent to, we simply need to multiply both sides by five, giving us that 100% is equivalent to £79.95. And so the original selling price is equal to £79.95. We could have also solved this problem using multipliers. From the question, we can read that 20% of the original selling price should be equal to £15.99. And so if we let x be equal to the original selling price, then we can form the following equation, that x times by 0 0.20, the multiplier used to take 20% of the original selling price, is equal to 15.99. And to solve for x, we divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.20, which would give us that x is equal to £79.95. Okay, last question. A manufacturer manufactures a car for a fixed cost. The car showroom determines the selling price to be 55% above the manufacturing costs. The car showroom currently has a sale, reducing all cars by 16%. The sale price of the car is £12,369. Calculate the manufacturing cost of the car. So we have a car which has been manufactured at a fixed cost. Its selling price is 55% more than this fixed cost. And during a sale, that price, which is 55% above the fixed cost, has been reduced by 16% to this value of £12,369. So there are a few stages here of price increase and decrease that the car goes through before it's sold at this price of £12,369. Now you could do this question by using the proportion method. But the most efficient way to do this type of question, where you have more than one stage of a percentage increase and decrease, is by using multipliers, okay? So we started with the manufacturing cost. And to work out the first selling price, we can multiply this cost by 1.55, which is the equivalent multiplier for a 55% increase. Now, since we're told that the price of all cars were reduced by 16% well it means that this whole price was reduced by 16% and so we can get that value by multiplying by 0 0.84 the equivalent multiplier for a 16% decrease and since we're told that the sale price of the car was 12,369 it follows that the multiple of these values is equal to 12,369 and so from this equation we can work out the manufacturing cost by dividing both sides of the equation by 1.55 times 0 0.84. And using your calculator, you should get that the manufacturing cost is equal to 9,500 pounds, okay? So I hope you found that useful. Keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.